Hold on, it's very rocky, mate. Hold on. <laughs> Hello beautiful bingo boy. Hello beautiful bingo boy. just likes to play. Yeah. He's like, whatever, whatever works. I just want to play. <laughs> he likes to stick. Play, 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 play. What you got, Rover? 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 You got it. 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 Thank you. 
Good boy, Freddy. No more. I think he's had enough. Good boy, Freddy. <laughs> Thank you. 
a ginormous one. Lily.
You don't need to do it, Rosie. You're a loose cannon. It's loosey goosey. Right, anyway, so I thought I'd decode and interpret a couple of things that I saw there in relation to Barney and Cruiser and then maybe touch on um, Abra as well. All involving Barney. So, as we know, he's a trainee Sheriff Barney. Um, well, I'm not sure what, what, what rank he is, but- Yeah, he's tra trainee Sheriff or deputy, deputy, deputy. <laughs> De deputy's apprentice? Yeah. Um, he's on his way up, that's all he, I, I see. He's, on, he, he, he's in the system. <laughs> He's in the system. It might be work experience kid, it might be employed, who knows. But um, all jokes aside, he, he found a job to do the today that um, he took pretty seriously. And that was protect mama from cruiser. <laughs> and he could- So you were on the phone. Yeah, I was talking about, I was talking to a potential adopter for diesel. Which is exciting. Early stages, yep. but very, very exciting. Um, Perfect scenario, just I believe so, yeah. Quietly. At this stage, on paper, <laughs> on paper it looks good. Um, and so what was unfolding around was Auntie Sam's handing out treats for no tricks, just giving them out for free. <laughs> yeah. Here, have some treats, guys, for doing that. Um, and Barney thought... You're up to no good, Cruiser. And I could agree with Barney's assessment there. Cruiser's looking around for, you know, something to, to be a little bit cheeky, as we've found, as he's got a bit confident, he's starting to get a little bit, you know, not so social, as far as the lower ranking dogs. So Barney thought, well, don't bring that around my mum. <laughs> and so as Cruiser's come in to get a treat, Barney's decided to put himself between Honey Sam and Cruiser. And it was pretty funny because he was really just putting his body on the line, not not growling, not showing teeth, but just standing there and then move over and stand there and kept blocking him. So Cruiser could see this uh, behavior going on and so started licking Barney to, to you know, satisfy Barney's you know, desire, whatever it may be. But Barney knew you don't really mean that. You're just doing that because I'm in your face. And so Barney wouldn't accept it. And fair enough, as it went further along and continued, uh, you could see Cruiser wasn't submitting to Barney at all. And he was just like, you're in my face. Yep, lick, 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 I'm walking around you. So it was a very, you know, half-hearted, well, maybe this will satisfy you, get out of my face type, type thing, and just a couple of licks. And uh, But then as he kept ignoring Barney and kept trying to come in to Arnie Sam, uh, Barney did an air snap to Cruiser. And that's when Cruiser sort of went, oh, this is a little bit more um, assertive than I expected from you. So then there was started to be a little bit of uh, respect there for Barney. And I think it's the really the first time Barney's sort of been able to hold poke his chest out and be like, yeah, I did that, you know, and I got the response I wanted. <laughs> rather than everyone going, Settle down, mate. You know, and, and walk Which is on. why I was like, yeah. good boy, Barney. Well, I wasn't going to say that part, but <laughs> Annie Sam obviously was, was doing like, all the wrong things. Oh, but you protecting mum? Aww. So, <laughs> you know, we don't promote any social behaviour here, Annie Sam. I know. But you did reward it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, you know, Annie Sam just thinks my job isn't hard enough, and so she wants to make it more challenging. <laughs> I say one thing, you say another. Uh, but no, all jokes aside, it was a bit of an interesting encounter. And as we know, Cruiser is not a dog that wants to confront. He's not a dog that he would much rather avoid and run away than confront. Uh, however, 
because he's pretty cheeky and likes to come in from behind and give a nip on the back of the legs and then run away. He doesn't want to have any sort of um, real encounter. He just wants to let them know subtly, I got you, you know, which is, again, it's any social behavior, but it's not a direct behavior. So it makes it a little bit more challenging for any of the dogs to stand their ground with him. And I think that's what Barney just hunted out there and just went, I see you, I see you for who you are. Don't bring that around here, mate. So in a way, you can let that behavior go for a little bit to see how it winds out. But at the same time, Barney sees it because Barney's that same dog. <laughs> He's like, I know you, that's my game. I do that. Yeah. I definitely got your number. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, it's probably a good point though, um, you know, maybe just explaining that there are some things that you let play out. There are a couple of things, and if it's within reason and it's justified, I do let it play out. So I let a natural hierarchy establish and maintain within reason. So, for example, Ros Roscoe can play his game and, you know, set all the dogs down and do the things he does within the pack to be that, you know, head of the pack or, or, you know, enforcer of the pack. But if he's overstepping the line a little bit or he's carrying on a little bit, like, Roscoe, stand down, mate. Settle down a bit, back off and let that play continue. So I do still manage, but some of it I, I let play out. So, for example, I know that I've been allowing a certain behaviour from Abra uh, because it seems to be keeping Barney in check. So Barney to Cruiser... And it's Abra to Barney. So Abra's a little bit different though in that situation. She's recognizing Barney's a bit cheeky and Abra is taking cues from Roscoe. Mm -hmm. And so Rosco, she, you can, she can see Roscoe is just like, Barney, when are you gonna listen, <laughs> you know? But he's, well, we've tied Roscoe's hands and um, don't allow Roscoe to, to do anything more forceful than his barks and that kind of thing. So Barney sort of sees through that magic mirrors and says, you're not going to use those teeth, so I'm not going to listen to you. Abra, on the other hand, straight away says, well, if my big brother wants to keep you in check, don't worry, I'll, I'll get him for you. And so Abra's just riding, riding Barney like sea biscuit, And... Um, doing quite an effective job. However, she does carry on a little bit too much, so I, I rein it back a little. But that's an example of some of the dynamics that I let play out and let a natural hierarchy and a natural order uh, come in. Some of the ones that I don't allow are the unreasonable or unjustified ones. And, you know, those kind of ones come from the likes of, say, Miss Red on a new dog, where her textbook signature move is to go up and greet the new dog, give him five licks and then nip. As if to say, hi, 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 watch yourself. <laughs> you know, that's what she does. And they're like, oh, what, what just happened? They're confused because it was surrounded by acceptance and then there was a little... Watch yourself, mate. You know? I may or may not insert a clip right here <gasps> of the exact thing that you're speaking of. Yeah. Just so everyone goes... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, see that. And without, without a word of a lie, it is every single new dog that comes to the farm. Yeah, I mean... Every single one. Uh, so, obviously, like Luke just said, it is unacceptable. He does not allow that. Mm. Um, but rest assured, it isn't dangerous. It's not, um, you know, but we still don't allow no, it. So I, I always watch it because I know it's happening. It's very predictable. I know it's about to happen. Um, so I'll watch and, and uh, you know, interrupt it. But now it's got to the point where she, like Barney, knows that if she does it in front of me or she knows what I'm watching, so she'll be on good behaviour. But as soon as we move on or behind my back or whatever, she'll do the same thing. So she always has to just say hello and then let them know who she is. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite a funny behaviour um, and again Abra being the more intense dog that she is 
doesn't fly with her, and um, she learned very quickly. Oh, okay. You win, Abra. I won't do it. Very surprising with Abra, and one of the things. So that, Abra doesn't pick on you, dogs. No, no, no. But she won't take any shit. Mm. So whenever anyone has a go at Abra, oof, they regret it. Not that she's actually doing anything to them, but she just persistently gives that attitude of right in the face, bark, 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 and then intense eye contact, won't let them look away, just like, hey, I'm here, you started this, what are we gonna do about it? And every single dog just goes, no, nah, don't want anything to do with that. She's a five month old puppy, and she has instantly won over or, or earned respect and pretty much got them to back down some of the bigger key personalities in the group. Tilly, um, Lily, Joey, Maggie, all big personalities that don't take crap from anyone. And they've all gone, oh, a bit off more like Chewy. Mm. Just turned the back and gave her a hip and shoulder like that. Yeah, I'm not, not going to continue this. The biggest one that I thought was Maggie, I've never seen her do that. She always holds the grudge. But she just went, ah, you're too crazy for me. Mm. I want nothing to do with this. Mm. Dogs know. Dogs know it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog, and Abra's got it in space. So, that is the sole reason why I feel like she needs the bike training to learn how to control it, when to use it, when not to use it. Otherwise, she's just going to learn to use it, she'll use it whenever she pleases. So, that's the reason we're doing bike work with her. Um, never seen it in a puppy. Do it to such mature dogs. Mm. Anyway, Barney Boy, learned some street cred today. Look at the cruiser in the back. Up here on zoomies. <laughs> Freddie's like, I don't share my toys. <laughs> Should learn this without me, cruiser. Uh, rightio, so a bit of a plan and update on Abra and uh, the fact that we are conducting some bite work training with Abra. Now, she naturally is showing far more drive to bite than most dogs. That is just hands down something that is undeniable as far as her compared to 99% of the dogs out there. So, given her bloodline, her breeding and temperament, uh, it, it makes total sense. You know, that's what both her parents do. We need to make sure that she doesn't focus that energy and drive in the wrong areas. And so that's why we've decided we need to do some bite work with her. Um, the main objective there is to give her an outlet and give her something where she can, mind the pun, sink her teeth into and it be okay and it be accepted and it be fun and it be constructive and then let it all out but then leave it at the door and then go on and be a well socialized and content dog uh, in all other aspects of her life. So. We are really just giving her an option to expend that kind of uh, energy and that kind of uh, work and then still give her all the other stimulation that the farm has to offer. And the benefit there is we're going to get the best of both worlds. We're going to give her an outlet, but then we're also going to give her the stimulation, uh, you know, the, the socialization, the activities that everything that we do here at the farm 
Uh, but that will obviously, in the working world, that will have to drop one to pick up the other. So we're looking at a natural balance that is suitable for Abra. We're not trying to get her to be a full working dog. Otherwise you have to cut out all the rest of it and make those sacrifices to bring this side up and be more effective or more efficient. Uh, so we're going to make sure that Abra has a good work-life balance. That's our objective here. We're doing the bite work to make sure that her socialization and play with the other dogs is um, constructive and she's not letting out those types of energies in towards the pack. She has that vice to do that and then when we go to the pack it's uh, it's no longer. Basically it means that and the whole point of doing this training is to give her an option to bite but part of this training is that you bite on command and in no other circumstances. So you don't just choose when you want to bite. Part of this training is giving her the environment and the opportunity to bite, but she only bites on command. Uh, just the same way you stop the bite on command and it is fully controlled. That's the whole idea of this type of training. So that anytime she attempts to bite or bites outside of that training, she understands exactly where she went wrong. So teaching her the bite commands, the release commands, uh, you know, the ignore, all of those things are going to help her to become a much more social and uh, in, integral part of the pack. And, and her social life will um, be so much more fruitful for her. So it's a different, it's a different um, direction and a different, uh, you know, what is it? Not technique, but approach. It's a different approach to... And a different goal as well, isn't it? Um... Well, it's a different approach because it is not really that common for a dog to be bred uh, with the right temperament to achieve the outcome where you've got a dog that wants to bite everything, mm. you know? That's not very common. That is only in that narrow field of work. That's mm. what they do. Abra, she likes to bite your bum, bite your face, bite your arm, bite bite, bite, bite a butterfly, bite, bite, bite water, bites, bite, bite water, bite yeah. the blanket as she falls asleep. Hilarious. How funny bite that? kitty post tail. Like she just yeah. wants to bite everything. So I'm just trying to compare it to, you know, like you very think of different, very different to puppy mouthing. Yeah. Not puppy mouthing whatsoever. Mm. This is a high drive to bite. And I included a, a tiny clip on the training um, video when we were talking about the bite work training. Mm -hmm. And it's just, um, I can just explain it. Um, I'm not sure if I'll include it. Mm. But um, she bites Freddo on the bottom mm. and pulls this giant Rottweiler to the ground. <laughs> Did. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just when? from a bite on the bottom in the pool. Uh, okay. Um, and, um, but I guess what I was trying to point but again, out. Again, let me say that this is a five month old puppy doing that to a fully grown mature robot. Yeah. Wild. And, um, you know, yeah, sure, he's eight years old, but he, um, not, not many dogs. Not, like, what? I what? tell you, Barney's been trying to do that for yeah, ever. He can't. Like, so this is something where you have a natural element of superiority in that field. Like yeah. this dog is just bred to do that. So maybe people, like if we, we, the reason why we're saying these things is it might give some more understanding as to why we would consider a different approach for Abra. It feels like, like we could go down the path of just stopping her from biting altogether. Yeah. But the risk we take with going down that path is that it just doesn't work. Well... And not, not that it doesn't work. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what the scenario is. And it's, you can relate it to something that's completely different and maybe more people will understand. And if you think about a working dog in the line of sheep herding or yep. cattle herding. I was going to say, because we've talked about like yeah. Tilly. And so you've got, you've got a really natural here. Look at this. Joey's coming in for Maggie here. Uh. Maggie did something, but she's... Just keep an eye on this for a little bit. Maggie's coming to me, I think. Yeah. It's like Joey's hot on my tail. <laughs> yeah. Settle down. I don't know what happened. 
but I could tell something was going on. So um, we've always been of the opinion though that we've never trained like the, um, the healing out of Tilly. It was always to teach her when she can and can't do it. It was to, it was to have control of it. Yeah. When she can and can't do it, when it's safe to do so, and uh, redirecting onto a uh, safe option. Yep. So don't do it to us, don't do it to the dogs, do it to the tyres, you know, yep. that kind of thing. But we're not telling her not to do it at all. If she's got this internal urge and overwhelming desire just to go and do something and you bottle it up and don't let them do it, yep. it'll come out in something else. Yeah, it's dangerous. So it's not, it's not gonna give her that content Calm, yeah. peacefulness, and compose yourself, and will give you an outlet yeah. uh, where it's safe to do so. Mm -hmm. You know, just like if the dog was actually working, and it sees all these cattle, you don't want them just to run in and spread the cattle out. You know, you've got to do it in a way that brings them into where you want them to be. So that has to be controlled. They have to learn to uh, compose themselves, and then they will get the option to go in and and move those cattle. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural form of control. Yep. That, that they are bred to do, they're very good at it. If you don't give them the training, they just go and do it at anything they like and think, yep, this is fun, I'm just gonna be a menace, I'm just gonna go and bite mm -hmm. all these cattle and nothing's gonna be achieved by it. Uh, so they need that training. Now we haven't had a dog come in here before that has been purposely selected for temperament and breed to be a dog that will bite anything on command. Like that is a pretty unique scenario. So we need to acknowledge that this is this dog's internal drive. Mm -hmm. We need to acknowledge that um, if we ignore that, then you know, you're not doing a service, you're doing an injustice to this dog. So it also goes back to, um, as I would just like to mm. raise this uh, comment, because mm -hmm. a lot of people have said, um, well, you could get her into um, like, agility mm -hmm. you know or you know one of those yep. um like high active they working do, they, sports they do well in those things they do yeah so those activities they are good at it and they are they do get focused and they're very agile so those kind of sports and activities are great for those dogs and it does stimulate them but it doesn't give them an outlet for that bite it doesn't give them that that release for and that satisfaction for using those teeth which are inherently um, driven in these guys because it is quite a serious urge we don't want it to rear its head in an uncontrolled environment so the best way to deal with this is to deal with the situation head-on and teach her when to bite and when not to bite and let her understand that these teeth are going to be highly controlled you know, and give her the option to satisfy that urge and teach her how to bite properly under command in the right environment. And then outside of that, the plan will be that, or the, the objective will be that she won't have that desire just to bite everything because she gets the outlet on, um, in those games. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of other dogs that, you know, like we just gave the example of Tilly, we teach her not to bite certain things, i.e. the dogs and cars that are driving down the driveway, all those things because it's not safe for her, it's not safe for the other dogs. But you can see the drive in Tilly. She will sit there. Where is she now? Uh, she's lying down somewhere, but she will sit there and- she's probably in the den. And just watch as a dog goes past and then just go, <laughs> just mouth it and be like, so I wish I could have just whacked you right in the back of the heel there. You know, this is that constant drive. There's just a dog walking past, minding his own business, and there's Tilly like, yeah, I just wanna, I just wanna get it. But we've done the training with her to teach her that that's not something that you can bite. You can bite X, Y, and Z. You just can't bite that. And if we didn't do that, she would just heal all the dogs, and she did when we first got her. Mm. She would just nip other dogs for the sake of it. Uh, so it needs to be focused on. You don't want to avoid it. You don't want to pretend it's not there. You don't want to hope that it's going to go away in its own time. You need to hit it head on, train it, learn how to control it, 
and then she will mature with the fact that I don't bite this, so yes, I can bite this when I get the right command. Mm. That's that's the plan. We're not saying that this is the training for all Mallies, no. you know, or all Dutchies. We're just saying that this is the training for Abra. This is, this is the training approach we've decided to go with for Abra. Yep. Each dog is different. And on a side note, I thought I'd just throw in there due to the fact that, you know, he's showing similar traits. Uh, I threw Barney in there <laughs> with, uh, with the bite sleeve. And you know what? He didn't disappoint. <laughs> I think that he might enjoy it. It might be a bit of an outlet. So, for him. can you explain why you thought you might give him that outlet? Yeah, with Barney, it's 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 different. It's him. He is uh, doesn't doesn't want to attack and cause damage or bite for the sake of biting. With Barney, he gets frustrated and he just doesn't know how to control that frustration. And so that's why he does that. That's why all the other dogs don't give him that respect that he's demanding because they can see that he's not controlling or conducting himself in the manner of a high ranking dog or a natural leader. He loses his temper and he, he, he you know, cracks it a few times. So they're like, ah, you're gonna break. You know, we're not, we're not gonna give you that. Uh, so as far as the bite suit's concerned or the sleeve, yeah, that frustration comes right out straight away. And that's when he does actually do quite a quite an impressive bite. So again, with Barney, it is going to be something where I feel I may be able to give him a bit of an outlet, but also learn, help teach him to learn how to control that frustration. And um, it might be a solution for him to then compose himself whenever another dog gets in front of him or doesn't go his way. You know, he doesn't try and take it out on the other dogs. I think he's going to love it. Oh, yeah, I think he's going to love it, yeah. You know, like you sometimes talk about, you know, <laughs> he doesn't like to be seen as baby Barney. Yeah. You know? Oh, he's, and, and you know what? And this and is... And the thing is, I did it with him yesterday. This is the serious all, stuff. All the know? dogs were on the outside of the fence watching. Yeah, yeah. And Barney had his time to shine. Yeah. And you could tell he was just like... Everyone's watching, and got to do a good job, you know? <laughs> and he got in there and he, he's like getting the growls on. And he's like, yeah, you watching this? You watching what's going on here? You know? I'm a tough boy. Yeah. He's like, finally, I've got the call up for the real training. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he's going to be so proud yeah. of it, I reckon. That'll yeah. be cool. Yeah, it's pretty funny. So, and also something special, um, you know? I, I, I must admit, I, I kind of felt that way when. Um, from you know, clearance diver in the, in the Navy to Special Forces operator. I remember being out there in the Special Forces ground, <laughs> in the, in the um, Special Forces training facility, you know, you got the kill house and the shooting ranges and all these towns and villages that are just there to do shooting serials. What you're saying is... I felt the same way. You Barney. understand Barney. I sat there and I went, this is... <laughs> effing cool you know? <laughs> I was like I feel you know this is awesome um, yeah and I took a lot of pride in it and I loved it and I can see Barney may get the similar sense of pride and mm. enjoyment out of it yes you know self uh, so that's self exciting isn't it yeah. so it'll be good yep okay let's go to the pool okay let's do it <laughs> You've got the smile that is wider than the fun. Whatever you might see will come true. Whatever you wish upon a star will do. And there is only one thing you should feel alive. It is the Oh, 
father's face, my father's heart. A good day when the fall rain starts. A feeling you find, no matter how far you go. The thing you can't quite put your finger on. Back. Party of six, never on.